Welcome to this week's edition of Pit Stop with me, Jakob van der Merwe. I'm joined by Mark Jones and Charles Bosch. <laughs> Nothing new on the agenda this week, but it is definitely a South African favorite. The Volkswagen Polo GTI. Now, before you start panicking, you didn't miss anything updated or anything new, but um, VW has been very active over the last, since last year or so, um, in their whole Polo strategy, um, in announcing that they're going to be uh, still building that Polo in Carriga, previously Utenhaeg, till 2029. Later this year, as Charles informs me, who was at that festivities, um, we're going to be the only country to build the Polo. Um, the, the the regular Polo, the normal models, received a few tweaks a few years ago, let's say across the line. And then now in celebration of all of these things, the Polo um, Vivo GT getting a few tweaks and all of that. Obviously, the big boy in the Polo setup is the GTI. And with putting all of these things in the media press fleet, obviously they're going to put in a GTI there as well. And we got another one. We've had it before. Nothing's changed the engine or anything like that. And obviously, it being a popular car, um, Mark took it to Gerotech, where he's done it before. And um, just without any further ado, Mark, um, obviously, I can't ask you your thoughts of the car. Has it changed from before? But just, do you like that car? What's it all about? Tell us about it. Um, yeah, this is not going to be a popular opinion. I enjoyed the drive in it. I mean, it's fun to have a little hot hatch to go around. And it's, it does what it should do. It's got a little bit of character. But Polo GTR has stayed Polo GTR now forever. It's, it's, it's what VW does well. They don't change a lot. And, you know, a few years ago, there was a lot of competition in the segment. You had Fiesta STs and um, OPCs. Little, OPCs and little Peugeots, whatever you want. The segment had a lot to offer, and those cars had a lot of character. Um, the Polo then was seen as a bit bland, and the GTR, and that still remains today. I mean, it, it, it's it's never going to, it's like Golf 8 GTR, it, it's not a massively emotional kind of car. You buy it because you want it, it's popular because VW resonates with the scientific population. Um, and it, it goes pretty well, but yeah, I, I got to say, it's fun. Would I pay over 500,000 Rand for one? No. Um, I, I think the big change to that vehicle in terms of the last time I can remember driving one, is there are a lot of options available now. You really can go through a spec list. I did have a little look at that. And, I mean, you've got RQ, uh, headlights, headlight, matrix. Light, matrix headlights. I mean, they're brilliant for a polo. I mean, for the sake and there's all sorts of adaptive suspensions and whatever. So you can tick a whole lot and that Polo can easily become 600 grand. So great little hot hatch, would I own one? Not in a hurry. Speaking of the price and of the Golf GTI, Shoal, uh, I, I just had a, I've just been through the Auto Trader uh, car industry report for 2023, obviously all the pre-owned sales. Just very interesting. If you look at most popular models and brands, they've got a lot of things viewed and searched for and inquired upon, whatever. But Polo GTI is very high up there. And it's almost like, obviously the Golf GTI is still popular and the Golf R, it's almost like Polo and then Polo GTI has become a, more than before, very aspirational type of thing to drive. Like, I mean, it's still 400 it's not cheap but i mean compared to a golf 700 plus whatever it's more in realistic reach for many people it is i mean it's, it's strange to think that a couple of years ago that the polo gti was just sort of or polo itself was just the it was if you couldn't afford a golf you bought you bought one now it's almost the other way around because there's no more normal golf 8 available it's now just golf gti and golf r so that is for many people, if they want to go with VW and they don't want to be seeing a Polo Vivo, you go Polo, a normal Polo. And yes, it is on the expensive side. I mean, if you see the comments and so on that people have been throwing around social media. Um, when we drove, um, we had um, a Polo Life, which is not even the top of the range model. It's the um, entry level model on test in 2022. It 
back then, it was almost 450,000 rand for a polo and had so many optional extras. It had, I think, 90, 91 or something thousand rands worth of optional extras um, fitted to it. But when you drive it, you can feel why it's built um, locally. It's set up for local market conditions and it drives it drives really, really well. And we all know the stigma around uh, associated with polo drivers has been going around everywhere. We haven't seen it. I haven't personally experienced it yet. But um, with people's budgets being what they are, with how things are going, and with Volkswagen slimming down on the golf range, and for people not wanting to go the SUV route, go for a T-Cross or a Tiger or something like that, the logical default option is the Polo. And I mean, it's one of the biggest exporting models in um, from South Africa and now with the um, being I mean the GTI is already the, um, South Africa is the only country in the world that already makes the Polo GTI in right hand left hand drive and then export it to other countries so now you're adding I think um, they said um, 100,000 extra units are now going to be um, added to production once um, it starts in June this year when um, production of the Polo ceases in Europe so Aspirational, definitely it has become. No longer a, a, a bottom of the mill runner hatch. Just just take us through its specifications. It's got the two litre engine. So the Polo GTI has got the two litre TSI engine, which is a reworked version of the one used in the Golf 6 GTI. Now, the, the engine is available in two states of tune. So it's 147 kilowatts and 320 meters of torque in South Africa. But in Europe, there's a more powerful version that makes 152 kilowatts and the same amount of torque. But the reason they did that is to confirm or to um, comply to emissions regulations in Europe. And Volkswagen South Africa, when we asked them, why don't you bring the more powerful version here? They said, because there's no real difference. It makes no sense to bring the more powerful version probably then it's going to be more expensive than it already is because you now have got extra um, power. So, and because of what our emission standards and so on is, it's just not necessary, not worth the extra tweaking and so on that needs to be done. So 147 kilowatts and 320 newton meters of torque and you only get a PSG uh, gearbox as standard. Okay, Mark, I'm going to put you on the spot here to wrap up uh, your lotto balls falls correctly later this week. You get... 500,000 Rand. Let's just round it off to a nice amount. I give you the option. New Polo GTI out the box with a few nice extras or second hand Golf 7.5 GTI. Which would you go for and why? Sorry. Um, yeah, I'd, I'd probably opt for a 7.5 GTI. It was probably the best one so far. They had really sorted the Equal cold status, more uh, space. It was actually quite fun. I really, really enjoyed it. So, low mileage, like driven on Sunday by old lady or something, 400 meters at a time. Um, I would take the same. Five, it's just got a little bit more character, it's a little bit more speed, a little bit more gravitas. In, in, in performance wise, obviously that Golf is better than the Polo. Yeah, not a whole lot. I mean, the Polo does a six and a half to 100 like it's been claimed. And I checked the last three times we, we've tested that vehicle, now three times over it's, you know, they change a the light bulb, we test it, they give it to Charles for a week, we test it. So it does the same numbers. Uh, so the power is exactly, I think it hasn't changed one bit. Although, VW is very well known for, you put that car on the dyno, that 147 on the motor is probably very close to what it pushes on the wheels. I mean, it's, it's just a VW thing. Um, the Golf is slightly quicker. Yep. You would expect that. It's just a little bit more powerful. The engine's slightly more efficient, more responsive. Well, that's the beauty of when it, when it comes to cars. Everybody's got his own opinion. Uh, Mark's opinion is uh, slightly more informed than the average uh, Joe out there, and that's exactly why we have him on the show for those type of things. Um, I think I might have skipped it before uh, when we started, but please, uh, well, if you like the podcast, um, go and like it. You can also share it and subscribe to the Citizens YouTube channel, and you can tune in every week and um, hear what we talk about. That was all for this week. Thank you very much for listening.